no one was even talking about defense tech five years from now. That's now right. we're talking about tens of billions of dollars that are being put into exciting new companies, um, companies like you mentioned at the outset, Hawkeye 360, um, Anderol, uh, Shield AI, um, which is a, a, a unmanned systems company, um, to follow the first wave of new defense companies would be Palantir, SpaceX, um, uh, and, and Anderil. And in fact, the market cap of those three companies, SpaceX, Palantir, Anderil, is now bigger than the market cap of the five defense primes. They're doing about 10% of the revenue, but they have a market cap that's bigger than Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, et cetera. So it just shows this incredible momentum where the market believes value is gonna be created. And of course, that's bringing in a lot of capital to support that. All of this very good trends from the standpoint of national security, uh, because we're now developing capabilities like those on display in Ukraine that will be complementary to the big, large defense platforms we've seen for years. We're still going to need, if we've learned anything from Ukraine, we're still going to need the big defense platforms. We need the the air defense systems. We need the, the Patriot batteries. We need F-35s. We need submarines, but we also need unmanned systems, uh, resilient comms, uh, more AI software, on and on. So it's Silicon Valley, which has been on the forefront of bringing those technologies uh, to market and making those available to the military. Yeah, the combination of high-low, as people tend to put it, uh, is what the U.S. needs, and that's mm -hmm. where the future of warfare seems to be headed. Um, if recent hot conflicts are, are any judge of where they are headed. Um, you've mentioned the defense primes. Right. You've mentioned the, the new emerging defense tech firms. You mentioned the VC firms have now really taken the defense tech sector, the DevTech sector as a key priority and is starting to pour large amounts of money. Do you worry now from the VC hat that you wear, Michael, that the defense primes are gonna, uh, are gonna dominate and try and not uh, lose their uh, lead, so to say, so easily to these new emerging uh, rivals now? How's that battle gonna play out? I don't think it's so much as, yeah, I don't see it so much as a battle or competition because we need more defense capability. Historically, we've spent a lot more on defense than we are right now, even though we have now with the big, beautiful bill plus defense appropriations about a trillion dollars uh, going in defense. That's still 3% of GDP. That's half of what we spent during the Reagan buildup where we were concerned about the Soviets and certainly a lot less than we spent in you know the 1960s. So we're spending a historically low amount on defense. And even of that, only 20% is spent on things for war fighters. So the rest of it's being spent on, you know, salaries, uh, sustaining large defense platforms that we have in place, et cetera. So what I see is that uh, we need both. Um, we're not spending all that much on defense. We're not spending all that much on what we supply war fighters. That's where I would like to see growth in the defense budget on what we're actually buying to deliver to war fighters, giving our commanders more capability. And for that, we need the high-low mix. You talked about it. I've talked about it as a hedge strategy. You've got to hedge what you've got with the large platforms to provide new capabilities that enhance wow. what we can do in a complex situation. So it's, it's not an either or. We need more from the defense primes. They're capacity constrained because historically, as I've mentioned, we have not spent that much on uh, building things for warfighters. So we need to be spending more and we need this new capability and we need it yesterday. All you have to do is look at an operation like Spider's Web uh, that the Ukrainians just successfully perpetrated to see how vulnerable we are to the new technologies. We've got to catch up and now get ahead of that. And that's gonna require a tremendous amount of support from venture capitalists, these new uh, players in the marketplace. So there's really room for everyone. 